What's up? So yeah, we are um, back with another Arbor Study Guide little thing. Uh, we're on chapter nine, that is tree support and uh, lightning protection. I'm not gonna talk about lightning protection at all. Uh, it wasn't on my test and it was a very small part of this chapter. But yeah, um, normal disclaimer, like I'm still learning, still learning every day. Um, this stuff, like before you use in a, uh, like out in the field in a practical sense, like I would highly recommend going through, um, going through the ANSI A300, which is the standard for tree support and uh, the, like that'll give you the exact specs and type of uh, cable and the size of hardware you should be using. So yeah. Um, do that, I would do that for honestly every single job you do just to make sure you get it right, but that's up to you. All right, so tree cabling and bracing involve installing hardware to support a tree. This adds strength to the tree by limiting the movement of the limbs. Um, we do this to increase the life of a tree and reduce the risk of failure. So before we even consider cabling, we need to determine if the general health of the tree is worth saving. If this tree is just falling apart, completely decrepit, we should probably recommend a removal instead of throwing a bunch of cables and letting it fall apart and have those dangle in the air. So, yeah. Um, Codominant stems are often considered the weakest part of a healthy tree. And these are, so this is going to mean we're going to be doing a lot of cabling and bracing on uh, codominant stems. It's important to understand that these systems do not eliminate the hazard. It just brings the hazard to a um, acceptable level by significantly, significantly reducing the risk. There are a number of reasons to cable a tree. This includes support a weak union, support for multi-stem trees. Um, the tree is weak, is a weak wooded species, um, and those weak wooded species are good candidates for just removals in general, but you can cable them. Um, when selecting the hardware for cabling, consider the size of the limbs, the weight to be supported, and the presence of decay. ANSI, three, uh, ANSI A300, standard for tree support, uh, specifies minimum hardware size and various sizes of limbs. So yeah. Go over that. <laughs> so here in North America, we generally use one of two different types of steel cables. Um, one is called EHS on the test. Um, and the other, a more malleable one is a common grade cable. Um, aircraft cables made of 19 strands of galvanized wire is widely used in Australia and the UK. This cable is a strong and flexible, but is limited for the choices of attachments. So starting off uh, with smaller limbs. For smaller limbs, um, anchors such as lag eyes or lag hooks can be used within uh, when there is no decay. You can't install a lag eye or a lag hook uh, into a limb that has signs of decay or into the decay itself. It'll rip out, it won't do the job. Uh, for larger limbs, use eye bolts and threaded rods are commonly used. Um, install these by drilling a hole that is 1 16th to 1 8th larger than the rod that will pass through the limb that you are supporting and, you know, the stem that you're anchoring the limb to. Um, remember those numbers too. Important. Very important. Um, Okay, so once you have your holes drilled, uh, you will pass the rod through it, then install a washer and nut on the back side to, uh, as a stopper knot, um, once you have the tension of the cable. So prior to installation of the cable, you want to use a system to tighten the, tighten the limb and then set it back into the cable. You're gonna tighten it with a ratchet strap or whatever you have, whatever sort of system, you're gonna tighten it more than um, the length of the cable, then you're gonna set it back into the cable, if that makes sense, I hope it does. Um, you don't want your cable overly tight. It should just be taut, you know, and definitely not loose, and it's doing nothing. As a general rule, cables should be installed 
two thirds the distance from the weak union to the top of the tree as long as the wood can support it. So in some instances, you may need to install more than one cable. If this is the case, um, then the anchor, the holes you drill or the anchor spot you choose should be um, spaced at least the diameter of the limb away from each other. So if you have a, a <laughs> you're not going to be cabling a one inch limb, but if you have a one inch limb, you're cabling it, you need two anchors, you need at least one inch of distance. So these are all rigid systems that we're talking about. We can also use uh, non-rigid systems. They're often referred to as dynamic cable systems. Um, these systems allow for more tree sway. This allows the tree to produce more supporting wood where needed, making the tree stronger in time. So it's a, less of a permanent fix and you're hoping that the tree can kind of strengthen itself. Um, these systems are non-invasive. We're not drilling holes. It just, it's used um, generally with a rope and the use of a flat insert at the point of contact in order to distribute the load over a larger surface area. The system is designed to prevent girdling. Cool, so yeah, uh, guying a tree is an option when, consider, when considering adding a support system to a tree. This is done by installing a cable between a tree and an external object. Um, so the reason you would do this is if like removal is absolutely last case scenario, say it's a historic tree, um, the tree has major significance. So you would figure out a way to support the tree, um, the, the entire tree, like cabling is supporting limbs. Um, guying is supporting the entire tree. And typically you have to support these trees because something's gone haywire with their roots. Um, and the homeowner doesn't want to remove it. They're willing to accept the risk or there's a, a major, like a major, just, I don't know, say it's a, a historic city tree and they don't want to remove it as well. Guying also, if the tree were to fail, it prevents it from failing in the direction. Like it'll fall instead of say you have it, say you have it guide from me to my hand. It can't go this way. It'll go either that way or that way. And real quick, uh, propping is the installation of uh, essentially a stool or something for a very large horizontal limb to sit on from the ground up. Um, there's a couple live oaks in South Carolina where they do this, like real big. Uh, you can find pictures pretty easily. I, I'm not sure how this whole copyright thing goes, so I'm not going to put any pictures in anymore. Um, but yeah, you can propping is exactly what it sounds like. You're building, you're building a base for typically a very long, large lateral limb that you don't want to remove. Um, they do it to. I've seen plenty of pictures of live oaks with these on it. So when we're talking about cabling, guying, and propping, there's also bracing, which is the use of uh, steel rods drilled 1 16th to, uh, I don't remember, <laughs> 1 16th to uh, 1 8th larger than the steel rods through a tree. This is through a crack or like a co-dominant stem too. You would drill holes and use a rod and uh, washers and, and nuts to tie that together and then you want to space those out too. You're kind of stitching it back together if that makes sense. That's bracing. Yeah, quick video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. It's getting cold out, so <laughs> and I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up with this three videos a week. It's getting hard to do. But yeah, if you're if you're new to the channel, consider leaving a, sub, a, a subscription or whatever, <laughs> dropping a like. Uh, that would be really cool. Helps me out big time. I try to post. Uh, I try to get a video out three time uh, three times a week. That's my goal. Um, these videos are typically like I had bigger ambitions than just standing in front of my wood pile in my backyard and talking to a camera but um, a lot of people have told me um, that they'll just pop these on and listen to the information and uh, I've gotten some positive feedback so if that's you I really appreciate you and if you're still around like thank you it means a t it means a lot to me
really does. So on that, I'll let you guys, I'll leave you guys alone and uh, yeah, cool. See you on the next video. <laughs>